I bought this lathe several months ago on Craigslist and I've only turned a couple of things on it. I haven't really gotten very serious about wood turning yet, uh, mostly because it's winter time and it's freezing cold in this garage and I don't like spending a ton of time in here. But hopefully when the weather warms up, I'll get around to start turning some more projects. Now I don't know a ton about wood turning lathes, but out of the ones I've seen, not very many of them have a digital readout telling you how fast the spindle is turning. So I thought it might be a fun project to put a little RPM display or tachometer on this wood turning lathe. Now if I open this up, you'll see that there are, I think, six different settings and you can change the belt to change the speed and it tells you what RPM it's running. And I thought it would be kind of cool to be able to see a digital readout of that. So I'm brainstorming some ideas on how to read the RPM of the spindle. And one of the things I came up with was to use a Hall effect sensor, which is basically a magnetic sensor. And the plan here is to put a little tiny neodymium magnet around the rotating part here. I'm not sure what this part's called. Somebody probably can help me out. But as it spins around, it could pass this Hall effect sensor and I'll have the Hall effect sensor connected to some sort of microcontroller like an Arduino and it'll count those pulses every time that rotates and it'll add it up and do a calculation and spit out the RPM. Now to display the RPM, I think I have some seven segment displays uh, somewhere in my collection and I'm gonna put some sort of seven segment display up here and probably make a 3D printed enclosure. And I'll probably actually take this whole piece off and remove the power switch and pop it into my 3D printed enclosure and then use the same mounting holes that this uses to attach the whole thing on here. So that's kind of the plan. Let's see how that goes. So to get started, I think I'll go ahead and take this piece off. I'll be sure to unplug the lathe before doing anything. Since I already have to plug this lathe into the wall, one of my design goals was to use that cable coming into the box to power my electronics. I didn't want to have to plug the Arduino into a separate power supply. This means I'm going to need a transformer module to step down the AC voltage into 5 volts DC. So with that, I'm going to head inside into the lab and gather up some components and build a prototype on the breadboard. I make a lot of other cool project videos like this, so if that's something you're into, be sure to subscribe to Bite Size and you can keep up with all the other future projects that I work on. When you're working with seven segment displays like this, it's important to remember that they're either common anode or common cathode. Mine happen to be common cathode, but either way, you're gonna have to drive one side of the LEDs with the GPIO pin of the Arduino. If I were to turn on all of the segments of the display to make the number eight, for example, that would be about 80 milliamps of current. However, Arduino GPIO pins can only handle about 40 milliamps of current. So I'm going to use four MOSFETs to drive the four cathodes of each display. That way the MOSFETs are doing all the heavy lifting and the GPIO pin is protected. I want to limit the current flowing through each of the LEDs to less than 10 milliamps, so I'm going to use 470 ohm resistors. I placed the Hall effect sensor into the breadboard and wired everything together using jumper wires. When I was ready to test the board, I wrote a quick Arduino sketch that starts at zero and just counts upward. I've got the prototype working and now I can start designing a printed circuit board to make this project more permanent. I'd like to take a quick moment to talk about the sponsor for this video. When I work on an electronics project that I want to look more professional, I turn my design into a PCB using JLC PCB. Ordering PCBs from JLC PCB is super easy. You can upload your board design files and complete your order in minutes. For just $2, you get professionally made PCBs with a quick 48 hour turnaround. For more information about how you can get a discount on your first order, be sure to visit the link in the description. While I was waiting for the PCB to come in the mail, I started working on designing a 3D printed enclosure. Once again, I used Fusion 360 to design the enclosure. It needed to fit the PCB with the seven segment displays, as well as the power supply and the power switch. I have a 3D printer that I've been using for a couple years now and it works great. I even made a video about it if you want to check it out. While moving to Vermont last year, one of the structural pieces broke on the frame. I decided to take my chances and went ahead and used it to print the enclosure. The print time was estimated at 14 hours, so this was definitely one of my longer prints. My first attempt failed after 4 hours, but it was my fault. I made a mistake on the heated bed temperature. The second attempt went all night long and looked great up until hour 12 when something misaligned and I ended up with a completely unusable part. 
I did try out a cool new time lapse method for 3D prints and I captured most of the print. I was really frustrated at this point and so I broke down and bought a new 3D printer. This new printer did a wonderful job with the print and I think it will work more reliably than my previous printer. When it came time to move the prototype from the breadboard to the PCB, I thought it might be fun to try to do a live stream. If you want to watch that live stream, I'll have a link in the description as well as at the end of the video. Live streams are one of many perks I have for Bite Size supporting members. You can become a Bite Size supporting member by clicking the join button below this video or by visiting patreon.com forward slash bite sized. Here's what the board looked like when I had finished soldering. I continued to develop the code and tested it out using some magnets on a drill. At this point I was ready to assemble the PCB inside the 3D printed enclosure. The last step that needs to be done is wiring in the Hall Effect sensor and then the power switch. And then from there, I'll be ready to install this on the lathe. I ran into some clearance issues with the placement of the Hall Effect sensor, so I needed to trim off some of the 3D printed enclosure. As I finished up the wiring and started running some tests, I realized that having a single magnet mounted on the spindle wasn't giving me enough resolution. In other words, the RPM would be reading something like 500 and then it would jump up to 560 and then 620, so there wasn't enough granularity between the readings of RPM. I thought about this long and hard and even tried to fix this in the code and pull out more resolution, but that obviously wouldn't work. And finally it dawned on me that I just needed to add more magnets to the spindle. I printed out a paper template with 30 evenly spaced lines around the circle. It didn't take me long to realize that the magnetic fields were interfering with one another and my Hall Effect sensor was not reading it properly. So then I reduced the number of magnets. So I've got the 3D printed enclosure out here in the garage and I've hooked everything up, but I'm having some trouble getting some correct readings. I know that my belt settings have certain RPM that I should be getting and my display is not really getting anything close to those values. So to help me troubleshoot this problem, I brought my oscilloscope out here and I've connected the probe to the Hall Effect sensor output and I'm looking at the pulses to see if I can figure out what's going on. Hopefully you can see this, but I've zoomed in on the signal of the Hall Effect sensor and it looks like I'm getting two pulses every time the magnet passes the Hall Effect sensor and I think that's throwing off my calculation. So I think I'm going to make a change in the code and hopefully that'll fix the problem. Another thing I wanted to try to make sure that the RPM calculation was correct was to remove this template. I kind of printed out this paper template to help me space out the magnets, but I went ahead and I 3D printed this ring that actually will fit uh, the magnets inside and evenly space them out and the ring will slide over here. Okay, I think I fixed the code here and I'm gonna upload it to the Arduino and see what happens. I'll go ahead and spin up the lathe and I'm gonna hold the Hall Effect sensor near the magnets here. And I've got the belt set so that the RPM should be around 2,650 RPM. So let's see what the display reads now. That's looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and put all the electronics back into the enclosure and tighten it all up. Now that I've got everything put back together, I think the last step I'm gonna do is take a piece of this eighth inch acrylic and cut it to size, and I'm going to scuff it up using some sandpaper to act as a diffuser for the LEDs to make it a little bit easier to read.
I had to adjust the exposure on my camera to get these LEDs to turn up, but in real life, they look very crisp and clear. So with that, I think I'm gonna call this project done. I think that about wraps up this project. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoy projects like this, I'll post a couple more here for you to watch. My name is Zach, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.